Today we're going to look at how to use ChatGPT within Google Sheets. This is going to require AppScript. We're going to show you how to put that together and we will provide a link for that script below so you don't have to type this out manually. So extensions and AppScript, we already have the script loaded here. We're going to show you how to set it up for your own account. So at the very top we have our secret key. This is the API key that you'll get from your OpenAI account. So over here in our OpenAI account, we'll go to API keys and then we'll create a new secret key. So when you initially get in here, there's not going to be any. So just create a new key. Go ahead and copy this and then just go in here and replace this key with your actual key. Just make sure you still have these single quotes around it. Hit save and you'll be good to go in your own project. So what we're doing here is using what's called a custom function. And so we can actually reference this directly from Google Sheets without getting into the app script. So first let's go ahead and demo what this looks like. And then we'll go back and show you how to modify some of this in case you want to use it for other projects. So we could ask a question, for example, what is precipitation? And now we'll use our custom function name. Should we go in here? We have it called GPT prompt. You can update this if you like it to be named something else. So we'll use it just like we do another function, GPT prompt. And then if we open this up, what we have set here is the prompt. So that would be the question. Then you can optionally set temperature, which is the sampling temperature. Zero means more standard answers. Two is more creative and random. If you don't fill it in, it'll default to one. And then the number of tokens, this is going to be looking at what you have used for the prompt and also the response. So you don't overuse your usage. So we're just going to simply select R C8 cell. And then here it filled in that response. So we can ask another question. Maybe this question has been bugging you. Is tomato a fruit or a vegetable? And so we can just, again, get our formula, cell, and we should have our answer here in a moment. And typically speaking, is technically a fruit. So there we go. So let's go back into our app script and look at what we have going on here. So this is the wrapping for a custom function. So this is the text that tells Google how to display it in the Go sheet. And then this is the actual function here. And so this is our inputs. So prompt, and it's defaulting temperature to one and tokens to 200. This is the URL that we're pinging for the response. And this is the data that we are sending. We're telling you what model we want to use. And this is embedding the message. So it's grabbing that prompt. So that question, for example, is the tomato fruit or vegetable? And that's what's showing up here in this prompt. The temperature again is that number between zero and two, and then the max tokens we want to use. And then this options section here is just some stuff telling the website, the API service, what content type we're using, which is JSON, our headers to embed our secret key, which is our API key for access, and then the actual payload. And then again, this is going to actually ping the service. The URL fetch app is what actually pings the website, gets the response, and this return is what actually returns that text to the cell where it was. So if you're not familiar with AppScript, this may be a little over your head. If you're familiar, obviously you're probably already on board with this. But I just want to show you how to update this to a different model. So if we go back to our API reference, here we have just the docs API reference here. We can look at what we're currently in is chat completions, which is what this GPT 3.5 model is for. You can also do completions here. And for example, you can use the DaVinci model. So if we go to our documentation models, you can see we have different models here. And so the different models do different things. And so if you click on one of these, you can see here we have different models. The one we were using was Turbo right here. So you can pick if you wanted to use an older one here, for example, DaVinci, swap it in here, go back to there, completions, all right, so if we're going to use our text DaVinci, we will have to modify our code a little bit. So for example, here you can see the URL is a little different, doesn't have that chat part. And so we're going to go ahead 
and just make a different one here. Let's go ahead and reset this back to what it was. Let's just make another function. Uh, and we're going to use DaVinci. So we can grab our DaVinci. Remove this chat bit. Then look at what else we have here. So this D represents the body. And so here you can see it just says prompt. So this is where we have messages. We may have all those stuff. And so we can actually simplify this to simply prompt. And prompt is what this is actually is as well. And then, then let's go ahead and change this one. So we'll just call this DaVinci. And then let's look at our response here. The choices, it looks like text. So choices, this last one we have messages. We're gonna change this to text. And that should return what we want. So we can go back in here. We can go to DaVinci, C9. Let me see there. We're now getting a response tomato the type of fruit. So that is a quick review on how to switch this around. Let me actually change this here. All right, that is it for today. Don't forget to check out the rest of the Coefficient website for more tutorials. And if you have not installed Coefficient, make sure you go ahead and do that now to get all your data into Google Sheets. Thank you.